Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. The third speaker was David Chalmers, who yeah. had submitted this abstract and uh, had kind of lobbied me a little bit, uh, you know, give me a talk instead of a poster. Mm -hmm. And we did. And uh, anyway, I'm glad that we decided that. And Dave got up. And, you know, uh, in those days he had waist length hair and he strutted back and forth, kind of prancing like Mick Jagger, um, very demonstratively talking about the hard problem. How things like learning, memory, attention, behavior, reporting, things that, that were being studied were difficult problems, but fairly easy compared mm -hmm. to the hard problem of how we have conscious experience, subjective, first-person point of view. Yeah. And as and, I, I recall back then, the, the academics in the room had sort of shoved the hard problem under the carpet. They only wanted to deal with the easy problems as if that's all there was. That's right. It was considered somewhat unscientific by the scientists, and even the philosophers didn't want to touch it. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was too vague. It was too tinged by spiritual approaches, by Eastern philosophy, by this and that, and it just didn't, it didn't distill down to something scientific that could be measured, and it still can't, but you can't really measure or observe consciousness because you change it or alter it when you do. Yeah. Uh, alter it when you do. So, Dave gave this talk and the crowd came alive and uh, really at that moment I think the the field or the movement of consciousness studies is an interdisciplinary effort kind of galvanized and crystallized. crystallized at that yes. moment because he he shed a light on the simple question that every person probably asks of themselves how is it that I am having these experiences yes that's right so it, then there was a coffee break and I went out kind of like a playwright on opening night on Broadway as I imagine and kind of listening in oh the hard problem that's why we're here oh I get it the hard problem well, how is it that the so that kind of it started a buzz Mm -hmm. And the buzz has persisted uh, to this day, actually. And I give Dave a lot of credit for doing it. Yep. And, uh, you know, he helped make the conference a success, and we invited him on the program committee for the next one, and he and I have been good friends ever since. Mm hmm and, and, of course, he's been interviewed on the original Thinking yes. Aloud uh, series as, as well. So what you have endeavored to do is uh, to look at this hard problem and to see uh, how does it make sense in terms of uh, your disciplines of medicine, anesthesiology, and psychology. Yeah, that's a, uh, it's a tough question. So um, I should back up a little bit and say that um, uh, so I spent about 20 years studying computation in microtubules as an additional layer yeah. to brain processing, going around saying, no, there's way more processing than than, uh, than what they're saying. Which it appears there certainly is, because yes. as I understand your work, the microtubules could be thought of as molecular computers. Correct, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was, uh, you know, being a, a thorn in the side uh, to the, these various types of AI and uh, singularity and, and neuroscientists, neural network people. And then one day in probably around 1990, someone said to me, okay, wise guy, let's say you're right. Let's say there's all this information processing going on in the microtubules inside each cell and the capacity is 10 to the 27th per second. How does that explain consciousness? How does that explain feelings, love, joy, emotions? Basically, he threw the hard problem in my face, even mm -hmm. though the hard problem, at least the term the hard problem, hadn't been invented yet. But uh, um, he said, how would that explain subjectivity, feelings, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what it is like to be something? And I was kind of stunned because I realized that he was right. And I can't remember who this person was, but I owe him a, a debt of gratitude. And uh, even more so because he also suggested that I read a book by Roger Penrose, The Emperor's New Mind, which I did. And uh, so I read Roger's book, which The Emperor's New Mind was kind of a slap in the face at AI. Mm -hmm. The Emperor probably referring to the leader of AI at the time, Marvin Minsky, who was kind of an imperious, mm -hmm. somewhat uh, overconfident uh, Person. Another uh, former guest on the original okay. Thinking Aloud series. Yes. Yeah. Who used to say, and I have it on video, you should be proud to be a piece of meat. 